What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a brand new episode, brand new season of The Shy. The Shy. Season 4, episode 1 is titled um so food. All right you guys, pretty good opening episode for the season. Pretty good. So without further ado, actually, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on my channel and you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you know, you're taking me out on a date, not paying for my dinner, hit that subscribe button, <laughs> hit that notification bell button. And let's All get right, into it, guys. So I think the way that I'm going to do this um, episode review, I am not going to go in order of the episode. You guys know I never go in order of the episode. <clears throat> but what I think we're going to do is we're going to start up with Emmett, Tiffany, Dom, Jada, and Darnell. Because that's that right there. Let's just take Jada out of it. Those four, Tiffany, Emmett, Dom, and Darnell, that is a tangled, tangled ass web. Um, Where are we? So, we see, em, you, you know, Emmett has Smokies. He took it from, um, what was all my, god damn, I forgot the dude's name. I can't think of the dude, th uh, Sonny. You guys remember, Sonny's, he's now, it's now Smokies because Emmett and Dom took over. So, on the news, they're talking about Duda. You know, he is the mayor of, he's the mayor of Chicago now. And, you know, people are still talking about his alleged, you know, crime activity. So then you got two people in the, in the um, store, in a, in, a, in a restaurant, they're gossiping. One of them may have mentioned about, what was his, what was Jason's character's name? I forgot what his character's name is. You know, they're talking about, you guys remember, we never got an answer to what happened to him. We just came back and had the funeral last season and never got any closure to that one. But he, he. The one guy saying he thinks he's in the witness protection program. So then we also find out that um, Papa is working for um, Emmett. Emmett wants to give Papa his his um, paycheck, which actually his paycheck is in the form of money. And Papa's like, can you stop paying me in cash? Like, you know, I have to give half of this to Uncle Sam. So Papa also wants to be a, you know, employee of a month. And, you know, he's like, we ain't doing that here. So at this point, I guess Tiffany and Emmett are married. I remember in last season that, you know, Emmett proposed to Tiffany, but that was after he slept with Dom. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then I thought about it. I'm like, Dom, where's Dom? Well, Dom is still there. She's still cooking. So Tiffany comes in. So Tiffany is talking about, you know, her, um, her plug for edibles, they ran out. So she, so Dom is the only cook that she knows. And so she wants Dom to help her with the edibles. And Dom was like, I don't know anything about the edibles. So with that one, I can't help you. But then eventually she says, you know what? I do know a guy that could, you know, that I know he can help me with that. And we'll think, you know, we'll talk about it. So then Emmett comes back and Emmett is completely paranoid because he's asking Tiffany and Dom, what are they talking about? Are they talking about him? And they're like, no, we're not talking about you. So I'm like, oh, so Tiffany still doesn't know that Dom and Emmett fucked. Okay. So then Darnell come in there with that damn Bluetooth in his ear. Darnell's gonna wear that Bluetooth out. Darnell is stuck in the early in late nineties, early two thousands. Um, lying his ass off to some friend, somebody on his way to, you know, help him jumpstart his car. Mind you, he's in Emmett's restaurant. So then, you know, Emmett Dom is no 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 no. Darnell is there to get his girl. I'm like, who is his girl? I'm like, please, for the love of God, don't let it be Jada. It won Jada. It's Dom. I was like, oh my God. Girl, you just keeping it in the family, huh? You went from Emmett to, to Darnell, his daddy. Whew, okay. The D must be really good. And when Jada came into the restaurant, she said the same thing that I said, oh, she's keeping it in the family, huh? So then Dom and Tiffany, so D Darnell told Emmett that Tiffany invited him and Dom over to their house for movie night. So Tiffany and Dom are making the edibles. Darnell comes in with a VCR. I'm like, 
you know what I can't say who has a VCR in this day and age because I have a VCR still I still have VHS tapes don't watch them but I still have one so while they're sitting there watching you know soul food and it's that it's that famous line about faith fucking the family <laughs> and Tiffany repeated it I'm like shit you speaking you speaking a little bit of words you know kind of true to home although Dom isn't technically in your family yet she's fucked the family period she's fucked the family but Emmett is over there sweating bullets I'm like Emmett see Emmett and Tiffany see Emmett proposed to Tiffany under false pretenses how do you go into a marriage like that yeah and then just to wrap this up we see now this scene was kind of just placed in there I didn't know where it came from we see Jada, she went out with her masseuse. Now, we did see her masseuse earlier and in, in, later in the episode when she, we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about that. But we did see her masseuse when she was out with her girls. But he came to take her out on a date. And that was it for them. So let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Kevin. Let's talk about Keisha. Let's talk about Jake and Gemma. Now, the opening of the episode... It showed us some stuff that's happening, that's going to happen later in the season, I guess. So it looked like they may have been having a party. We saw Kevin as he was getting ready to go in, but he saw his girl kissing Jake, which I expected that to happen last season, but I knew that there was going to definitely be something there between uh, Gemma and Jake. Knew that there was going to be something there. Then we also saw Duda get shot. So... From that point, it went one month back in the past. So we see Kevin and Gemma. They are in bed together. <laughs> it was funny. They were in bed together. And Gemma's like, what time is it? They open up the blinds. The sun is out. So they like, oh, shit. He spent the night and your daddy is in your daddy's house. So Kevin's like, oh, you know what? How about I just sneak out the window? Kevin thought he was being slick. But Gemma's daddy was able to see him on the camera and Kevin put his clothes on and went up to the front door and knocked like he wasn't just there. So his, her dad lets him in and then, you know, actually, while Kevin jumped out the window, Nina was looking for Kevin. So she's asking Keisha about, you know, him. She says, I think he was with Gemma. She said, I didn't okay that. And Keisha's like, you know, the boy thinks he's going to Dre was like, well, you know, he's, he started back hanging out with Malcolm. She's like, when did he do that? Who is Malcolm? Don't know. So then, like I said, Kevin, you know, he, he was with Gemma's dad. So he asked him, you know, has he um, read the paper? Kevin was like, no, I get my news from the shade room. So what happened is some kids burned a lo some local businesses in the area that he said looked like Kevin. I wonder, does he mean black? Did he mean some black kids? Like, I was confused by that, but whatever. And he's talking about how people don't really want to come into the neighborhood because of the things that happen. Well, why do we, and, and I'm, I'm in agreement with Gemma, why do we as black people have to make white people comfortable to come into our neighborhoods? Why do we have to do that? And then when they do come into our neighborhoods, they gentrify the shit. So, no. Let's, scare, let's keep their asses scared so that they don't come in our neighborhoods. But, but then we, sometimes we run down our neighborhoods. It's a catch-22. But I'm with Gemma, though. So then we see Keisha. So Keisha is trying to find some an outfit to put on, and Tiffany's there with her. So at this point, we find out that Keisha is looking to have someone adopt her baby, and she wants to look presentable for him. And you know, she, she and Keisha, not Keisha, but Tiffany, is just trying to reassure her, like it's it's gonna be okay. And she was, you know, she was like, "Do you think they'll want to know where the baby, you know, where the baby came from?" I mean, if they want the child, they shouldn't care how the baby came into existence. They should just want the baby. So then we do see Jake. We see Kevin and Gemma. They're on their way to school. So Jake and Gemma have a teacher that they don't like, but Kevin doesn't really have an issue with the teacher, and Gemma has an issue with that. And he's like, why are you so angry? She says, I'm not angry. She says, I just want to have an intelligent debate. He says... I don't want to debate with you because I love you. Now, Jake is a little disrespectful ass motherfucker. 
Because he says, I never tell a bitch that. I'm like, why? You know what? I'll just about to say, where did he get this whole bitch thing from? But I never mind. I know where he got it from. But damn. Stop calling women bitches like that. Um. So yeah, they go to class. So then later in the episode, we see Jake and Kevin as they're getting on the train. So Jake still has his uniform. Actually, no, Jake is taking his uniform off and changing it to his regular street clothes. Kevin still has his uniform on. So then after they get off the train, they start walking. And then this one kid walks up to Kevin trying to give him some, you know, some hell. So Jake defends him and, you know, him and the boy get into each other's face. But they eventually walk away. So then a cop comes up to Jake and asks him for his ID. And Jake's like, man, fuck that. And Kevin's like, just give him your ID. And Jake is still continuing to walk away. And the cop, he just grabs Jake and just body slams him. And he's beating the hell out of Jake. And I'm just like, why are you doing that? That didn't call for, it didn't call for that. Like that was, that was excessive force. Like he's a kid. Like you, with a kid, you don't have to be that rough with them. Yes, you asked him for his ID. Yes, he didn't comply with you. But at that point, you can, he's a kid. You can tase him, you can pepper spray him, or you can mace him. Whichever one you want to do. But to go that far and to body slam him on the ground, that was just too far for me. And then the other cop pulled the gun on Kevin. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I, I just have an issue if with the cops. If you don't, why work in a neighborhood? Because I'm not gonna say that they're afraid of them. They're not afraid of us. They're trigger happy is what it is. Why work in a neighborhood where you want to say you don't feel safe? Like when it comes to, you know, black and brown neighborhood, neighborhoods where black and brown people live, I think they should have people who live, who actually live in that neighborhood policing that neighborhood. So that way, whenever a cop pulls you over, it's someone that you are familiar with and that you know and that you have a rapport with. So that way it won't be any of this, I'll oh, fuck that shit. Like, I ain't, I ain't fucking with you today. But like, okay, I'll, I'll be like, you, you know, if someone you know, if it's someone that you know, love, and respect, you're going to be compliant with them. But if it's somebody that, like those two, crazy, 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 crazy. <clears throat> All right, you guys, so Keisha. So Keisha goes and meets with the couple that wants to adopt her baby. Now, immediately when she was talking to them, I could sense some tension there and more specifically from the husband i'm like y'all want a baby but y'all got a lot of friction and tension between y'all and even keisha picked up on that and keisha asked him about that and they kind of tried to play it off i bet you guys somebody called i should you know what i should put this on do not disturb <sighs> but yeah um keisha noticed that there was some you know friction and tension between the couple like i said they tried to play it off but even i picked up on that and, um, like I said, Keisha questioned it. So then we see that, you know, Maisha, Papa, and Kevin, they're back at um, Smokey's. So Maisha recorded the whole altercation, and she wants to know what to do with it. Papa says that they should post it. Kevin says, destroy it, like, delete it. Like, he doesn't want Jake to have to relive that. And on the one hand, I, I get where Kevin is coming from. And on the other hand, I definitely get where Maisha and Papa are coming from. Like, it could be triggering for Jake to have to reach, you know, he lived it once. And then if he has to see it on social media or the news, then he has to relive that situation all over again. Like, like especially when it comes to like the, the likes of, you know, the situation that's happened in, in recent years, like that's been caught on camera, George Floyd. Um, what else? George Floyd, you know, I actually just go online, like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Am Ahmaud Aubrey, um, both of them, John, like all that stuff. I always wonder, we post it on social media 
to gain, you know, to put it out there for the masses to see. But then I also think about the families that have to look at that stuff and relive that stuff. And especially when these things go to trial, they have to sit in a courtroom and watch that. So it could be triggering, but at the same, in the same breath, it also puts eyes on the situation. So it's a catch, it's basically like a catch 22. Um, so then we see, so Keisha, you know, um, she's talking to Dre and Nina and she's just worried about her. She wants her baby to be in a happy two parent home. And Nina tells her like, you know, once you made that decision, there's nothing that you can really do. Like you can't control that. Cause what it is is Keisha doesn't want her child to be the product of, you know, two divorced parents. So then Kevin comes in and they notice that his face is bruised. Now, mind you, Kevin, on his way home, he was drinking and smoking. I'm like, oh, poor Kevin. Don't make this a habit. So, like I said, Nina and them asked him what happened to his face. He says the cops. So, he went upstairs to his room and, you know, Nina falling behind him. She says, do you want to talk? And he didn't. So, then we later see Keisha. So, Keisha went into Kevin's room and she says that, Kevin, you need to talk to somebody. He says he doesn't want to go to therapy. She says, you don't have to go to therapy. How about you just go and talk to Jake? She says, don't do like what I did. Like Keisha sat in her room. Remember all last season after they found her, she sat in that room. Like nobody could, you know, get her to come out of that room. So she says, don't do that. And she tells him how she felt. You know, she felt like she brought on her, everything that happened to her happened to her because she brought on herself. You know, she felt like nobody loved her, cared and things like that. And I don't know what Keisha's feelings are about being kidnapped because I've never been kidnapped, but I do know what her feelings are as far as the rape itself. I do know that feeling. And I do know that feeling all too well.